final day of German in you. Here we are at episode 20. So let's take a look into that culture that we've been neglecting so long. Well, let's hop into the classroom of learning. Well, we're back in the classroom of learning, but just because summer's coming doesn't mean we have to stop, since time's not gonna wait for us. So let's get started, shall we? All right, boys and girls, it's the last day of school. Are you excited? Me too. It's hard to see everyone go, but we have one last day of adventure before we're all out for summer. We've spent this whole year talking about German language, but not a lot of times talking about German culture. So for our last day of German fun, We'll talk about a culture blowout, starting with a very special surprise. Oh, are we going back in the time machine that Einstein gave us? You bet we are. I hope you're all ready for our one last trip in the time machine because we've got a very special German to meet. All right, everyone hop in and go ahead and take your time. Do we really have to go through space every time? How else would you do it? Go through the ground? This is the safest way to travel. Dude, we've done this 20 times and it still doesn't feel safe. Whoa, teach! Something up ahead. I told you the past exists! He says that every time. No kidding. Whoa, hard landing. Ugh, not the hardest though. Remember Munich? That was solid concrete. Or oh, that one time in Hamburg with the skylight? So much broken glass. Hey, Teach, where are we? Or when are we? All right, students, keep your eyes peeled. It's currently 1895. We're just west of Berlin. Wait, are we looking for? Wowee, it's Otto von Bismarck! Bismarck? The Chancellor of Germany? I did say you would know him when you saw him. I speak German, but I've got a feeling your English is better. Ah, American. What brings you to Deutschland on this planet? I know this might sound weird. Do not be afraid. We come in peace from the future. Yes, Vice Chancellor Bismarck. We're here to learn about you. Do tell. Do tell. Yes, I, Otto von Bismarck, will oblige you for some information. I've been in politics since the 40s when I was a dapper young lad in the Prussian legislature. I made a name for myself, and in 20 short years I was appointed to the position of Minister President of Prussia by Kaiser Wilhelm I. I oversaw three wars with foreign powers that unified the weaker Deutsche States behind me. And in 1871, we formed the German Empire with me as Reichen Kanzler, a position I held until 1890. Wow, you made all of Germany? I had the great blessing and support of my monarch, uh, but... I do enjoy the thought that I created this Deutsches Kaiserreich. Teach, you didn't tell us Bismarck would be so radical. I did tell you he was someone special. But you say that about everyone. We have to take him with us. You know any cool places to go around here, Bismarck? Ha ha ha. I know just the place for our students of history to visit. So where are we going, Mr. Von Bismarck? If you can be polite, call him Herr Reich Kanzler. Please, call me Herr Arthur, and we're going to the newest and greatest addition to the Berlin landscape, the place where Deutschland is abundant. The Reichstag? The Capitol building? Yes, that's the fun, as long as your teacher's okay. 
Gut, sind wir off. So, what's up with the Reichstag, Mr. Uh, Terror Auto? Yeah, George says it's super killer, yo. Regrettably, I never got to work in the Reichstag, as they finished building it after I had resigned. But it is a beautiful building and a wonderful symbol of our new and powerful empire. Oh. We're here, Kinder. Yeah. Alright, kids, Herr Alto. Let's not waste time and head on inside. The construction of the Reichstag began in 1884 on the former site of a Polish-Prussian aristocrat's home. In 1894, the Reichstag was finally completed, but Kaiser Wilhelm I didn't live to see it. After World War I, the Reichstag continued to be the seat of the new German democracy and was the meeting place of the parliament. But in 1933, in what many believe now to have been a plot by the rising Nazi party, the Reichstag caught fire. The oppressive Nazi government used the mystery fire to gain more power and control over the German people in the name of safety, cutting out the democratic process and eliminating the rival political parties. During World War II, the Reichstag wasn't used since Hitler's regime had eliminated the parliament. However, the building was still a symbol of German pride and became a war target for the Red Army from 1945. On May 2, 1945, the Red Army captured the Reichstag and Berlin, marking the Second World War's end. After the war, the governments of both East and West Germany were forbidden from meeting in Berlin, and the Reichstag remained a ruin for the duration of the Cold War. After German reunification in 1990, a reconstruction project began to restore the building to its pre-war state, with the addition of a new glass dome. The reconstruction is expected to be complete by 1999, thus allowing the German Parliament to meet there once again for the first time since 1933. Yeah, that sure was fun, wasn't it? You yeah. bet. Yes, I, uh, that was a great joy, but I'm getting a little hungry myself. You know a place where we can get some food? No, but we know a rocking guy who does. What do you say, Teach? Can we bring him? I don't see why not. Yeah. Hey! Also, would you like to join us for lunch? It's in about a hundred years. Oh, yes! <laughs> well, kids, how was our last adventure? It was great! Does it really have to be our last one? Sorry, but school is over for the year. We had some great times, didn't we? Yeah... Besides, just because school is over doesn't mean you can't get together with your friends and have some fun! Yeah, we can make a totally tubular band. Or maybe a study group? Oh, George! <laughs> Oh,